In this review, we'll be looking at the 40-inch camera slider from Immorden. If you've already visited my channel here on YouTube, you know that it's primarily about building and flying radio-controlled model airplanes, which is my primary hobby. To bring that to you, however, means having a secondary interest and hobby in photography and videography. In order to do a better job bringing you some fun videos about RC planes, I've had to up my game a bit with some tools for recording those outings. This review is for the Immorden 40-inch ball-bearing mid-size camera slider. Camera sliders are one of those tools that allow you to add some creativity to your shots and some overall steadiness that a similar handheld shot just can't reproduce. There are two types of sliders in this admittedly low price category, friction sliders and roller or bearing sliders. Make sure you know what you're purchasing. Friction sliders have a trolley or carriage that simply slides along the slider's rails using a plastic bushing or smooth surface in contact with the rails. Most do-it-yourself sliders are also friction sliders. With these sliders, the trolley gets harder to push the heavier the camera rig. With more friction, it will take more practice and perhaps more takes to get a nice smooth video. Roller or bearing sliders have wheels or ball bearings mounted in the trolley to reduce friction and increase smoothness. Assuming good quality wheels or bearings, the result is a smooth track across the length of the slider with much less effort by the person taking the video. The slider came in a long, narrow box, not much bigger than the long nylon case that holds the device. The pieces were all wrapped in light, flexible foam sheeting and then again in bubble wrap. The result was no nicks or chips on any of the finishes. The slider will support up to a 15-pound camera rig and by itself weighs in at a hefty 6 pounds. Let's look more closely. So here's what you get when it comes out of the box. First is this long nylon um, lightly padded bag with uh, a strap on the back for you to carry it around with. You get the end pieces, which are aluminum legs with adjustable feet, which is kind of nice. As you can see, you can screw the, uh, um, the foot down and then use this other bolt to tighten it uh, at the level that you find uh, is appropriate for the ground surface so you can have the slider set level. One thing I found is you have to return them to kind of this rolled up setting to get them to fit into one of the other things that came in the package, and that's this little case. That allows you to put those aluminum feet in there without scratching the, the bar. It also comes with two hex keys that I'll talk about in a minute, and then the slider itself, which is pretty strong. I don't know if you can see inside here, but you can see a couple of stainless steel rods that the roller bearings roll on that are uh, part of the trolley that is right here. The trolley also has a locking pin. It really isn't too adjustable. It, I found it locks it on or off, but uh, you're not going to adjust the friction uh, too much with this thing. And then uh, a little bubble level here on the top to help make sure that you've got the, tr um, the slider level. And as you can see, it slides very easily across here. Now, the, the feet mount very easily. They just slide into um, knobs or channels at the edge of the um, of the slider, and the thumb screw tightens them in. Same thing with this side. It's off-center, so you've got to get the right side in first. You may have seen me flip this around. But when you've got it on straight, it goes right on. Tightens right up. Now the other thing I want to point out, and that's where the hex keys come in, is that here on the top of the slider are some, um, some screws that hold this top plate on. And so you use one of the hex keys to remove the plate, and when you get the plate removed, you'll see the rollers. Using the pointy ends of your um, needle nose pliers, 
you can make adjustments to the roller after you use the other key, which of course has grub screws that are a little smaller, uh, to move them so they fit snug against these little stainless steel rods that are mounted inside. So that's a really handy feature, you know, going from hot to cold or just over time using it, you run the risk of these things becoming loose. And if they're not fitting snug against the, uh, the rails here inside the, uh, the track, you're going to get some wobble as this carriage moves, uh, not just side to side, but also forward and back. So the forward and back part is not good. So you're going to want to make sure that from time to time you adjust the bearings. And the fact that they're user adjustable is a very nice feature. The last thing I want to call to your attention is that there's a mounting plate here in the center uh, for the tripod mount that I discussed. You can use either a quarter 20 or three eighths uh, to mount your tripod here and then just kind of having it there and using the tripod to hold it as it moves back. You're going to need a sturdy tripod because the weight of this plus the camera is going to make it uh, a pivot point here. Otherwise, if you've got lightweight tripods, uh, you can use the same screws by just taking off the end feet using, again, 3 8 or quarter 20 on the end and then bridge the slider between two tripods, which will give you more support, allowing you to get smooth slides. As you've probably noticed, the slider kit isn't exactly complete. That's because you may already have the missing piece or you may want to choose the quality level. That piece is a fluid head like this one. It would be hard but not impossible to mount your camera directly to the slider. The end result would be static shots in terms of angle to the subject as the camera moved along the slider or wobbly shots if the camera was loose on the trolley. For many shots, you'll want to change the direction the camera is pointing during the slide or point the camera either up or down depending on the perspective you're planning to use. That's where the fluid head comes in. By mounting the fluid head firmly to the slider, you can use the adjustable aspects of the head to both pan and tilt the camera during its slide along the slider's track. Having a fluid head with a handle will make this easier. This will also take some practice. You'll need a flat base fluid head or one sometimes called a half ball mount fluid head. Here are a couple of shots taken using the slider and an over the shoulder shot of the slider in action. For hobbyists, you can find fluid heads from about $25 to the hundreds of dollars. Professional heads can easily top $10,000. The one shown here is about $30 on Amazon. There are a couple of ways that you can use or mount your slider. The easiest is to simply place it on a table or on the ground. Use the adjustable feet and the small bubble level to ensure that it's level and shoot away. You can also mount it on either one or two tripods. The weight of your camera rig and the strength of your tripod will be a factor in whether you choose one or two supports. I found that with a lightweight travel tripod, the slider was too heavy and the tripod head tilted as the camera moved from left to right. You can also mount the slider at an angle to get some more artistic or creative shots with the camera moving either up or down the slider. For a sub $100 slider, the Amorden 40 inch ball bearing mid-level slider is solidly built with some great features, including adjustable feet, adjustable bearings in the trolley, and a smooth action. For the hobbyist or the enthusiast adding skills or capabilities to their repertoire, it's a great choice. My sense is that this isn't a tool you'll just carry around with you in case you stumble into some perfect moment. Rather, 
It's a tool you'll use when your shot list requires a certain creative effect. It's a bit heavy, which is good for shooting, but bad for lugging around, and it's too large to stash in a backpack. I've got three or four standard shots I frequently use in my videos that this slider will definitely improve. If you found this video helpful, please click on the thumbs up button for the video. I really appreciate the extra second or two you take to provide that feedback. Feel free to add comments too. I try to respond if I know the answer or I leave it open for another viewer to provide some input. Also, please subscribe to the rcplanefuse.com channel to be notified when I post new videos. Thanks for watching.